everyone good evening good morning sir okay so i think most of us are here okay so a quick recap of what we discussed in our last class was that we started off with the basics of office 365 and what is it we created was like we created a tenant on the cloud and then we were able to manage the tenant on the cloud side we were able to create the users in on, a, on an individual basis we were able to create users in bulk and then we created an on premises environment and then we were able to and then we were able to synchronize the on premises environment and the office 365 environment through the azure ad connect and then we spoke about uh, the powershell also saying like how to manage the users on powershell and then how to manage the azure ad connect on powershell that is what we did so and then on the azure ad connect side we spoke about uh, we spoke about the sspr self service password reset and then we spoke about the mfa multi factor authentication and uh, yeah so these are the and also i think we spoke about the conditional access policy as well so now we are going to talk about the second core component of office 365 which is called as the microsoft exchange online so this microsoft exchange online so this is purely for the mail purpose so so this exchange server okay the exchange server on the on premises server on the on premises is the mail messaging server is the mail messaging server over here so on the on premises i'm telling you so this mail messaging this exchange online is one main reason that many many organizations opt for office 365 okay this extremely cost effective okay so let's take i think i have told this scenario already but because now we are going to talk about the exchange online very specifically i'm going to talk about that so let's say that you are having an on premises environment you are having an on premises environment so which has got like 1000 mailboxes 1000 user mailboxes and you are having say like 2000 shared mailboxes everyone knows what is a shared mailbox anyone who does not know what is a shared mailbox do let me know not aware of a shared mailbox do let no, me know no idea okay so this is a shared mailbox is like a team mailbox a team mailbox is something like the mailbox which is accessed by multiple people say like when you send an email to help desk generally when you send an email to help desk the email will come from help desk but it was sent by different different people so that help desk is a shared mailbox which is accessed by the help desk agents don't worry we will be we will be creating that also we will be seeing that so you can keep it you can keep it in a way like a very very simple understanding is like shared mailbox is a mailbox which is accessed by multiple people kind of a team group mailbox okay so if this is the scenario that you are having and let's say that your environment is having is granting like 5 gb of size for your shared mailbox and say like 20 gb okay and say like 20 gb size for your shared mailbox team just give me one minute
that. So yeah, I was saying that in your on premises, if you are allocating a 5 GB of space for a user and say like you have to allocate a 20 GB of space for your shared mailbox, approximately you should be having uh, say like a 5 TB plus like a 40 TB is that two into two is like four, 40 TB. So this much amount of storage space, you should be having it. So now this is going to be a savings for the organization because Microsoft is giving when you go to exchange online on the exchange. So if, if some in an interview, someone is asking like, what is the difference between exchange on premises and exchange online configuration? You can, you can talk about this saying like the user mailboxes get a 99 GB, or you can say like a hundred GB of hundred GB of size and say like the shared mailboxes get a 50 GB of size. So in the on premises, your 40 terabytes of space is completely a savings. It's all money, right? Storage is all money. So that 40 GB of storage space is completely free of cost for the organization. Plus users are going to get a five, uh, user are going to get a instead of 5 GB, they're going to get a hundred GB of space. Okay. Why did I tell you? We're going to get a hundred GB of space instead of five GB. So which is going to take like years together to fill it up. So that is an advantage. So that's why I'm saying that many, many organizations, they go for the office 365 package predominantly for the exchange to enjoy the exchange services provided by Microsoft. Okay. And also you can have any number of mailboxes created for the shared mailbox. It's totally free. No need to pay for licenses at all. You can create your shared mailbox in any number. And also, and also that mails are the tire one service. If mails are down, your business is down. So Microsoft as Microsoft is promising that they are going to provide a 99.9% .9 of uptime. So the business do not have to worry about managing this service service. It is very easy and, and the mails are up and running always. And so that's why many organizations opt for the exchange online is the logic over here. So now the concept is like, we are going to talk about what is exchange online and what are all the options that we get it when we go to exchange online. So if you see about this exchange admin center, this is the new admin center. If I, if you click on this one, classic exchange admin center, you will be able to see this look and feel. So what is this look and feel is that the same look and feel of the exchange on premises. So this blue color look and feel is something about is, is exactly the way how your on premises work over here. So this is the logic. This is the idea over here. Okay. So this is what is happening. So in this case, so, so let's talk about the menus. So because like portal is all about menus, right? So you need to know everything very clearly. So first let's start with the recipients over here. First definition is that what is a recipient? So recipient is someone is something that you add it onto your outlook to or CC or BCC. So today is say like what is recipients say like this that you add at the two that is called as a recipient. So user mailbox is a recipient, user is a recipient, group is a recipient. We will be talking about this resources, mailboxes, contacts, everything. All these things are something that you add it onto your to list that is called as a recipient. So as you could see over here, there is no plus symbol. Okay. This is a tricky question because like 
only the person who is going to watch the portal very closely will be able to answer this question question is like will you be able to will you be able to create a user will you be able to create a create a mailbox from the exchange admin center this is the question and the answer is no as you could see that there is no plus symbol and why there is no plus symbol because the creation of mailbox and the deletion of mailbox is directly proportional to the license that you apply at this place you apply a license mailbox is created if you don't apply a license mailbox is not created if you revoke a license mailbox is gone from here this is a, a tricky question which i will definitely ask it when i am taking an interview so that is the logic so the the meaning is like this is the mailbox which is a recipient you can't create a mailbox right from here so let's see the properties of a user what are all the properties that a user has it say like a general properties say like when on your outlook i hope everyone knows gal gal stands for the global address list l stands for the global address list so the global address list is something like which contains all the addresses like right? that that's very simple so on the global address list the details that you see saying your first name last name your contact information your email addresses all those things are coming from this detail actually so it is coming the first name the last name the display name alias all those things are coming from here okay so now let's see the mailbox usage so this is where it says that the size of the mailbox allocated per user is 99 gb of size that is the size confirmation over here so talking about the contact information as i told you if this contact information is filled in for the user that's when you notice it that's when you see it on to the global address list so the city let's say like So what is this is going to be having is like so this is going to what is it saying okay so this detail okay okay we'll do it on the active directory so the idea is that these details are the one which is going to show up when you are looking up for a contact on your outlook now what is important is like for an administrator for an administrator this mailbox features is the most important tab so before we go to mailbox features quickly check on to this saying the email addresses so many of you know the difference between this capital smtp and the small smtp friends between this and this capital smtp versus the small smtp okay so you have to read if you read this in microsoft microsoft educates you like anything so you have to read it so if you read it you have the answers so it says that each email address type has one default reply address when you send it when you send an email the the receiving person is going to see this as a 
is going to see this as a email address. So then what is the meaning of this small SMTP is like it's for the purpose of receiving. They can receive it in these address in these two address they can receive it. This is called as an additional SMTP. This is called as a primary SMTP. So that is the idea over here. So this is the primary SMTP. The capital ones are the primary SMTP. The small ones are the additional SMTP address over here. Okay. Now, so yeah, this is very simple. So if you want to add it, let's say that uh, there is a lady employee and uh, that lady employee is getting married. And after marriage, the lady employee says that, Hey, I want to change my last name. If that is what the employee is saying, yes, you can do it over here. Select test to user zero. Great. So if you check this box, it is going to make it as a capital SMTP like this. So this became a, I added zero to user zero to I added. Okay. So this I added as a primary SMTP address. So this is a very common thing, right? Say like when they, when the lady employee wants to change their last name after marriage. So this is where you change it. So now the question is like, if someone is sending an email to the old email address, still that will also get delivered. You shouldn't be editing this one. Okay. You shouldn't be editing this one like this zero to no. If you do that way, what will happen is like the emails will start failing. The, the emails will start bouncing. What, what will get, which email will get bounces? Like for example, if this person, if this lady employee has sent an email 15 days before, if someone is replying to that email, that will fail. The outlook cache will have that particular, will have this old email address in the cache. So that is the idea over here. So whenever you are adding an email address, whenever you, whenever there is a request is coming to modify the email address, you should always add it as a part of it. You should add it as an additional one. That is the requirement over here. Okay. So that is called as additional SMTP. So the capital one is the primary SMTP. Oh, coming back to the mailbox features. So this mailbox features is the one which says that what are all the options that a user really has it. Okay. For example, does the user have access to sync the mobiles on his mobile phone? Sorry, sync his emails on his mobile phone. Yes or no? That answer. Okay. So question about SIP. So SIP stands for session initiation protocol. So this is meant for the teams. This is the teams protocol, like the way how emails work on SMTP, the teams work on SIP. So that is the reason for it. So why this protocol, sorry, why this address is required over here is that the, for the integration of teams inside the OVA. Inside the OVA, you have the teams plugin, teams integration, right? So that is possible if you have the SIP with you. So that is the logic over here. Okay. Now, come back to this mailbox features. So as I told you, to see what are all the facilities given to the user, is provided at this particular place. Like I said, does the user have access to mobile? To for, uh, does the user have have access to mobile sync? Yes or no? That you will get it over here. So let's start with all these policies. We will be designing all these policies and we will changing it. Don't worry, I will show you. So first, 
let's talk about this phone and the voice features the mobile devices disable the exchange active sync disable the over for devices so what is the difference for example if i ask you saying like what are all the two ways of accessing gmail on your phone what are the two ways of accessing the gmail on your phone this one is the gmail app and the other one is the browser correct so that is the difference when you say it's an exchange when you say exchange active sync exchange active sync means that this the app 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 method through the app okay whereas oa for devices the meaning of oa for devices means through the chrome through the browser so depending upon that you can disable whichever you like it and also please remember that it is enabled by default so it is enabled by default for all the users if you want to disable it you can disable it for example like if you think about the if you think about the banking environments what do they do is like they restrict they restrict mobile access for the employees right so those kind of restrictions are applied right over here okay so you can disable the exchange active sync through the application or you can disable the over for the devices over here that is totally possible next is the email connectivity are you going to allow the user to use the over outlook on the web so that is mentioned over here saying if you if you say like we don't want users to be able to connect to the over because like outlook web access is something like people will be able to use it outside the environment over over a public computer or a private computer so if you feel like restricting it you can restrict it right over here on the outlook on the web which is also enabled by default and this imap and the pop3 are the old protocols so which are disabled sorry which are which are enabled by default so in in case if there is any environment like which is which is using it which is using a very old very old uh, version then they can use it otherwise like now this latest uh, this latest uh, you know versions don't use the imap so that's the idea now talking about the mappy what is this int for job of this mappy protocol is that the outlook access so question is like whether this person should be able to access access and connect the mails through outlook or not that decision is done through this mappy protocol if this is disabled user will not be able to view the emails on the outlook app okay now this most important one litigation hold can you ask what litigation hold what about litigation hold i'll tell you so now this the scenario let's take a scenario saying that this is your environment and this is a team 
so this is a team this is the exchange admin team okay you are part of the exchange admin team and i have one more team which is called as the infosec team information security team okay this is infosec team and this is the exchange admin team this is the infosec team and this is the exchange administrator team so now what is the job of this information security team is to you know is to monitor everything okay not not only in terms of uh, virus malware and also in any terms of data leakage also information leakage for example if someone if let's say there is one user okay let's say there is user 1 Let's say there is user one. What is this person is doing? Is that this person is leaking some confidential information to the partners, to the competitors? Okay, so that information, info, infosec team got it. They got a, they got a information saying that this person called as user one is leaking some confidential information to the competitors. So now they won't. they won't catch him directly because this person is deleting all the emails just after sending it he is deleting it just after receiving it he is reading and he is deleting it so now the information security team does not have a proof to say that yes this person is making a mistake so what is that they will do is like they will tell the exchange team they will contact the exchange team they will say that hey put this user 1 on litigation hold information security team will inform the exchange team saying that hey put this person on litigation hold what is the meaning of litigation hold is that if the user is receiving an email what is the general habit of this user is like he will read that email and he will delete it read that email and he will delete it so what will happen it will be gone from his outlook it will be gone from the server that is the regular habit but when you put this user on litigation hold after the user reads it and deletes it for the user it will look like it's gone but it will be still there on the server so the email the email with the email copy is still there on the server there is one copy already on the server as a proof but for the user he will not know that but the user will think like ah oh, okay i deleted it it's gone that's what user will think but it is it is available as a copy for the administrators to validate it on the server so this is called as a litigation hold so let's see that how we can enable the litigation hold are you able to get the idea what is litigation hold now team is that okay are you able to follow uh, yes so let's enable hello can i explain again please please be understood Hello. Explain that again. So the Susan, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. So the idea is that if there is a person who is leaking the information to the competitors, so that person needs to be monitored. So that person, we need to find a proof against this particular person. So that. is what is this information infosec team will come and ask us like they will ask the exchange team to put this person on litigation hold what is the meaning of this litigation hold is that the emails that the user send or receive even if the user deletes it from his mailbox it will be still there on the server but for the user it will look like it's gone it will be gone from the user's outlook the user will not be able to see the email but 
it is it will be still there on to the exchange server as a copy so that the exchange admin team can take this and give it as a copy for the information security whenever requested uh one question sir when we add any person in litigation group or policy he knows uh, he added in that uh, policy or group will not know the user will not know okay thank you i'll do that see now let's we are going to enable the litigation hold for this user so the now when you are going for litigation hold what is it saying it is asking like how many days you want to monitor okay so if you want to monitor for 180 days or if you saying like no no i want to monitor it forever continuously i want to monitor it then don't type anything that's what it is saying that's what i'm telling you, you should read it so it says that you when a user's mailbox is put on litigation hold the user can delete items from the mailbox but the items are retained by the exchange okay so what is it if you want to hold it permanently use this property to specify how long the mailbox will be on litigation hold use days to for infinite duration simply leave this field empty okay here on the notes you type in the incident ticket number saying like whatever the security team has provided you as an incident ticket number that you update it over here now the ideology is that this user is going to be monitored forever from now because we did not specify the number of days to be monitored litigation okay. hold is like the emails is for sir activity monitoring say like deleted emails are deleted from outlook Shake, it's consume these uh, like the same database space. Yeah, going to consume. It is going to hold it onto the same mailbox. Same mailbox and same database. Same right. same mailbox, same database. So actually, you know what? There is an interview question. Probably I'll just write it down, but I will explain that to you later. I'll explain that to everyone later. What is the difference between application and in place? Hold and nulling. These three things. It's a very common interview question. Okay, so now you know what is litigation. Slowly you will understand what is the meaning of in place and journaling. So we will talk about that as and when we move on. Sheikh, I have I have one small thing is like uh, if if any user delete the the mail. So that means is not a meaning of like he is leaking the email, right? Deleting it's not leaking, but if he is forwarding and then deleting, that's leaking. Yeah, that that means so. So if somebody by mistakenly delete in email, so that means security team uh like uh, uh, make a doesn't make a investigation for him. Just like the deleting, why someone needs to investigate, but. deleting an email which came from the competitor means it it needs to go for an investigation sorry point this user 1 is getting an email from the competitor okay that email if this person is deleting then it needs to go under investigation means like this email will also be there on the litigation hold this email will also be there on the server yeah yes that's what if there is any slight doubt by the infosec team only they will ask the exchange admin to add this person onto the litigation hold that's how it is so right, if you are asking you. yeah if you are asking like 
incoming email should i delete it means yes there are chances sent items should i delete it means yes there are chances both the way yeah all right i got to know so uh shrikant so information security team when we talk about the compliance so so team there is a question coming up saying like how does infosec team know like there is a leakage so that also we will talk about that when we talk about the security and the compliance so when we talk about the security and compliance there are a lot of policies we will design it so that those policies will notify the information security team saying that there is some leakage happening say like someone is trying to send an email with the word confidential someone is trying to send an email which is which is like um, which is containing some specific word or a keywords so those can be monitored that is the logic over here so through that information security team will come uh, will will have that information okay cool so now coming back over here so we spoke about the litigation hold and we enabled the litigation hold also now say that uh, litigation hold specify to have a infinite infinite uh, means like leave empty logic of a litigation archiving what is archiving a very classic example of archiving is the loft space in your house okay the things that you don't use it on a regular basis we keep it on the loft we don't take it regularly so that's the same thing so the additional space the additional email storage sp space apart from the primary mailbox apart from the primary mailbox is called as the archiving space okay this is the logic over here so let's see what is the offering from microsoft so as we discussed say in the mailbox you get a 99 gb you get a archiving space of additional 100 gb so which means on papers which means on papers you have 200 gb of space allocated for a user papers you get a 200 gb of space for your users so that is again an added advantage because on the on premises if you have to allocate another you have to allocate the archiving then again you will have to allocate it from your database only so that is going to eat up additional storage space for you so which is which is again going to be a which is again going to be a money money related so that is also given additionally by microsoft so that is the idea of archiving so again interview question is that is archiving enabled by default answer is no it is not enabled by default if you want you can enable it like this you have to provide the name for it archive name for it so have a do you see it it says 100 i know it's blurred but it says 100 okay you get a 100 gb of space on to your so if the user is having a e1 license as, as far as i know shrikan no it is uh, archiving is not available okay so because on e1 you get a you get only 50 gb of uh, uh, primary mailbox space another 50 gb of archiving space is only what you get it so check check on that uh, pdf file if you can check it you can get an idea 
I want to just clarify. Uh, like in the on-premises, we have configured the Outlook, okay, and uh, uh, suppose we have already provided the uh, 50 GB space to user, okay, and it's already exceeded. So we request the user to archive their mails to in the local PSD data file, right? Correct. Correct. Uh, for the Outlook. So uh, in the Exchange Online, uh, we need to like configure the Outlook and archive it on here. Yeah, where we can archive it? Like where we? How we will get the this 100 GB space? Uh, we need to archive here, and how we will get it? Question. Like just I want to access the old yeah. mail, so how I can access all these things? Okay, this once you enable archive for this user, the archive mailbox is available alongside the primary mailbox. You don't have to add it. You don't have to configure it. You don't have to connect it specifically. The moment you, the moment the archiving is enabled, it is available on the left pane automatically, alongside the primary mailbox. So I will get the like some pop up. Not a pop up on the left pane where you have your okay. uh, inbox. On that left pane itself, you will see this name that you configured. The okay. name that you configured over here. The name this you configured, right? This name right. you will see it. This name you will see it when you open your mailbox. Let's see. Probably after I complete this, I will save this and I will see if I can open this user's mailbox so that you'll be able to see it on the left side. So wait. I will just enable it for the administrator and I will open it side by side. What is what is any sorry what is important is like you should be able to browse faster on this portal so for that you should be for that you should be knowing like which option is available where so that is the idea Right. Do anything. I just enabled archive <clears throat> readily available for us. Anyone anyone having audio uh, issues? So like Hello. how we can create is is like uh, suppose we have a, like the same folder structures like uh, just like our cup, we have created a folder uh, folder structure as per our like comfortable, right? Okay. Like I want to uh, create some folders where the teams will go into this and receive these some other notifications will go to a different folder. So just want to like uh, when we have like archive in the Outlook, okay, uh, there was the options uh, like archive like like this. So when we just choose, uh, we have select the like follow the complete like uh, uh, subfolders uh, for the archiving. So, you mean to say like can we create an outlook rule that can land the email onto this archive is that what you're asking uh, this one and the same same folder structure is it possible same folder structure no you cannot deliver email to this archive you can only move the email from the primary to the archive you can't make the email to be landing onto the archive no that's okay, but uh, we also cannot able to like uh, create the same folder structures. Uh, and you can create subfolders here, so that is manually, totally possible. Like, uh, yeah, see this, okay. you can create it. Suppose we have a number of folders, like uh, folders and you subfolders. Can, you can create. You can create but, any structure that you like it. But this is the manual process. But in the outer, we got the options archiving and we select. The, like the uh, include sub info uh, sub folders and where, where do you get by default the subfolders the the personal folders that you created 
And of course, uh, of course, I'm the on-premises user. I'm using Outlook, okay. And uh, I want to archive my mails in the uh, new PHP data file. But I want to, like, uh, users uh, requesting me, I want the complete same folder structure in my archiving. So when I just go to file and options and select the archive, here there is the options key just uh, for the archiving, include sub all folders. So when we are going to the archive, it will create one by one the complete folder structure as uh, for our OS team. Understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yes, that is true. Yeah. That is the archival available on the Outlook, correct. But here, uh, probably like uh, you can try it on Outlook. I never tried it on Outlook, but see it on Outlook if it is creating the same folder structure. Oh, shit. Arun, you try and uh, let me know. Yes, Ozan, go ahead. No, no, this is Abit. Uh, we, we can create subfolders uh, manually, same as, uh, and rename them as uh, sent items, deleted items. And we can put yeah. a rule to move from uh, the, from the primary mailbox to the archive one. It will not create okay. automatically, but we can create the folders and uh, name it as uh, this, mail archive. What is Tarun is saying is that yeah. if you look on the Outlook application, mm -hmm. if you go to file, there is an option below the data file management. There is an option called as archive. So if you click on that archive, if you want to archive the inbox, on the wherever you want to archive it, it will create the same subfolder structure and it will archive it. Say like archive yeah. before 2022. If you say that it will it will archive everything before 2022 into that particular folder in the same in the same hierarchy is what Tarun is saying. But what I'm saying is like that is not possible on the Outlook web access, but I never tried it on the Outlook online uh, is what I said. Yes, yes, you're right. Hello, <clears throat> hello. Say, uh, there is any any uh, relation with uh, archive mail and PHT and OST between? Everything is related. I would PST say like, yeah. So what is PST? PST stands for personal, personal storage, storage table. Personal storage okay. table. So uh -huh. when this PST comes into picture is like when your mailbox does not have enough amount of storage and this PST file is stored on local okay. storage on, no, local storage. on your local laptop, uh -huh. correct. It is stored on the local laptop. Whereas what is OST? Offline OST storage. Is the, yeah. OST is offline storage table, which is a copy of your mailbox downloaded when you configure correct configure the outlook that is called as the ost okay so All right. PS, pst is a manual process ost is an automatic process do you agree yeah i got it PST means like you have to manually create the PST. OST is like the moment you configure Outlook, automatically your OST will get created. And what is the third one you asked for? Archive, is it? So whenever we create archive folder or file, so there is any specific time. So how long we can uh, we can put in our mail in an archive, so like a 10 years, five years? Three years after the news, it, it will that we will able. talk about on the retention. Discuss on the retention topic. All right. So what is it we discussed? We spoke about the mail features, mailbox features. So in the in which we spoke about the archiving, as you could see that it has got this one ready. Okay. So now let's talk about the mail flow. What is the concept of a mail flow? Is that there is a person or a lady employee who is going on a maternity leave or an employee who is 
who is going on a long vacation if they say like hey i'm going on a vacation i'm going on a leave please forward my emails to my replacement if that is what is the requirement you should be doing it right from here and there is a very important check box saying deliver the messages to both the forwarding address and the mailbox to both of them so that when this person is coming back when the actual person is coming back after vacation then that person will also be able to see that email if you don't check it it will be only forwarded the actual person will not be able to see that so that is the reason for this check box now it says that the maximum recipient limit is set to 500 okay so now i have a question for you saying that i have a group a group which has got 520 members okay but the recipient limit over here is saying only 500 if i send an email to this group what will happen what is the result Only 500, sir. So it will send only for the 500. So in what, on what basis is that in alphabetical order, size of the mailbox in what order? No idea. Oh, I, as when I read. When, when you add uh, members to the group. Oh, no, I, think no. it will deny. I think it will deny because saying that the recipient limit is like 520. So we need okay. to like, uh, okay. with the question I asked is like, there is a group which has got 520 members. If you send an email to this group, what will happen because the maximum recipient limit is set to 500. That's the question. Uh, it will reject all those things it will not deliver. Answer is that the email will get delivered. Guess how? Because you are sending to only one group, not 500 individual mailboxes. All right, you can uh, uh, you can send up to 500 recipient means even you can send up to 499 groups uh, with 500 members each. Means here it says recipients, right? What is the explanation I told about recipient? One mailbox is one recipient, one group is one recipient. So that's why this tricky question. So one group is one recipient, so it does not matter if there are like thousand members, also, it doesn't matter, it will go out smoothly. That is the idea. Everyone getting the logic? Like there's only single email address. So exactly. Simple. So single email address. address means single recipient. That's it. Simple ideology. Okay. So does not matter. But what will happen? You know, if you do you do you know how to expand the group by clicking on the plus symbol on the left side of that group? Have you seen that? There is a plus symbol which is there on the left side of that group name. If you click on it, the group will get expanded. But if you expand it, it will become a 520 recipient. That's when it will block it. So that is the that is the way. Like then it will get blocked. Not not in this case. Okay, cool. So let's see that. Now, this is the recipient limit we have it. Now let's talk about the message size restriction. What is the size restriction in Gmail? By twenty five MB in yeah. the Gmail twenty five MB. It's twenty five MB in Gmail. Okay, so now can you convert this value to MB and tell me how much it is? Is 
ตลกเขาไม่แชมป์บีดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิวิดดัสถ้าคุณดิ
okay i think i think something different so what is a mail tip is that the message or information that pops up before sending an email for example when you are sending an email to an external user it gives you a pop up saying that hey you are sending an email to an external person when you are sending a group which is having like 40 50 members it says like you are sending an email to a group which is which is having these many bunch of members so that is called as a mail tip so what is the difference between a mail tip and automatic reply like if anyone just send the uh, mail on the uh, user id uh, where we have set the uh, out of office okay so it will be delivered to internal external user okay in the in the mail the mail tip when i just uh, uh, like click on the mail and try to send the mail to a uh, respective user who has set uh, the mail tip so it will just pop up on the uh, uh, top of the message in the mail tip before you send an email you get an information yeah. you you get the Uh, whatever information they said, but mm-hmm. automatic reply you get the information after sending an email. At both, you will get a information plus acknowledgement. You get it. Do you agree? Yeah. Mail tip you get only the info. Okay. So on the if the, if the automatic reply the person will get an acknowledgement as well. Whereas in the mail tip, the user will get only the pop up. Other than that, it will not have anything. That's the logic over here. Okay. Now, the mailbox delegation. Okay, the mailbox delegation is the permission that you want to give it to someone. For example, if this person is a CTO or a CEO. this person has an assistant there is an there is a assistant or a secretary for this particular user so then you need to grant permission to that assistant or a secretary like this so that the secretary will be able to access the mailbox and the user can send an email from there so that is called as a delegation permission granting permission granting is called as a delegation over here box delegation so there are like three type of permission available one is a send as send on behalf of and the full access permission so the meaning of send on behalf of is that the user will when the recipient is receiving the email he will be seeing that user a on behalf of user b that is what it will say whereas if you if you grant a send as permission it will be sent as it is it will send as it, as the manager has sent it but in the send on behalf of it will say like the secretary on behalf of the manager that is how it will show so that is the logic in model team just give me a minute i'll i'll be i'll be back team just give me a minute i'll be right back you can which one do you want me to repeat mail delegation 
correctly okay so the mailbox delegation means granting permission so there are three type of permissions available one is called as a full access permission what is full access permission is that it is going to it is going to make the person to open the mailbox like a mailbox owner like the way how a mailbox owner will 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 perform it that's the same thing so in what scenario is this applied is like when there is a manager when there is a manager and there is a secretary model so there is a secretary who needs access to the manager's mailbox so that in that scenario we go with this so what is the what is the difference between the send as and send on behalf of is that when you have send on behalf of person if let's say like if you have to send an email to user uh, say like we have to send an email to another person so it is it will that another person will receive it like secretary on behalf of the manager that is how it will show up over here the secretary on behalf of the manager whereas here it will it will say like it will what is meaning of send as is like it will show as such the manager has sent it that is the idea over here actually all these things exchange what is the interesting thing you know it's like it's like highly real time and highly relatable which we use it on a daily basis so this is the logic so what is the concept is like if you want to make any changes in bulk what is that you can do is like you can select it like this and you can make the changes right over here for all these users if you want to make some changes you can do it over here say like for all these users you want to set a message size restriction you can do it over here that is possible okay uh, that hello uh, are we able to see that uh, send behalf of email address or we don't have that option to see that email you have, so we you, have an, you have an option why not okay how how can we find that on the recipient when the person who's receiving it the person will clearly see that it is sent on behalf of another person and if you want to test that
So what is it doing? Let's see. Permission. What is this? So, okay, okay, you know what? I'm doing something wrong. On the test user, what is that I did? To user, I should have granted for What is the stupid thing I did? I should have granted for the administrator, not this one. Take effect immediately. I mean, in few cases, you won't get an option saying show from so that is a common problem so always use a different browser in case if you are facing that okay so please test it so team now i don't want to just wait or hold it hold it for it so this is the way you have to test it so please test send as and send on behalf of that's a task for you all okay okay so uh Shikant, it is possible through mail flow so we will be talking about the mail flow so what is the question that we are getting is that from Shikant is that we don't want to send an email to one particular domain that one particular domain is frequent or like external emails should not be going at all yes uh, suppose i'm working in like a capgemini so in our organization will be restricted to send any uh, user uh, to other domain so external emails are completely blocked correct yes external so yes, is that right. okay is that on premises environment or a cloud environment cloud on the cloud right so in this case mail flow rules only you can do it mail flow rules only if you create a rule saying that all the emails which are external which are like sent to any other domain then block it simply we can do that we will do it we will be talking about the rules as in when we move on so so team we discussed about the recipients a lot so parallelly i will just show you how we can do the same thing on powershell so i'm going to open powershell as an administrator like the way how we installed the module what is the name of the module to see the list of users the active users what is the module that we need to install module that we need to install when you want to yes. see the list of all the active users ms online ms online very good so like the same way we are going to talk about something called as this find hyphen module exchange start find hyphen module exchange star so we should be able to get Let's see, exchange. Okay. So what is important is like you need to confirm it if it is from the Microsoft. So always confirm it like the way how we do it in Play Store. We always take it from a genuine organization. So confirm it whether it is from Microsoft or not, and then you can take it from there. okay let me install it uh, 
installed. Now I import it. Import it. What is the general way? It's like connect command. So you can randomly say type connect and press a tab, it will take it. So like the normal way we type in the username and the password on the browser, the same way we are going to provide the username and the password right over here. So use another account. There you go. So I type in get hyphen mailbox. These are the list of mailboxes that we have it in case if you want a mailbox dedicatedly like this, you can have it. See the complete list of all the properties for the user. See this maximum send size, maximum receive size, 35, 36 MB. Whatever we saw that, whatever we saw that on the GUI, we should be able to see it right over here via PowerShell. See this, everything is what of archive quota you have it. When you reach 90 percentage, when you reach 90 GB of archive space, you're gonna get a warning. So that is what it is saying. Issue warning quota when it is reaching 98 GB for the primary mailbox. That is what it is. If it's 100 GB, you will not be able to send and receive. Prohibit send is 99 GB. So that is the logic over here. See the complete list of properties. Now let's move on to the next type of recipient, which is called as the groups. So very simple idea. We all know what is a group. Group is a collection of user mailboxes. A collection of users is called as a group. Okay. So now there are four type of groups in PowerShell. Sorry, four type of groups in Office online, sorry, exchange online. So groups, types over here. First is like distribution. This is a distribution. So which is a very simple idea. Say like it is meant only for the email broadcasting. It's only for the email broadcasting purpose, you have the distribution group. Next is the security group, which is also default. In this, it is called as a mail enabled security group. 
because mail email address will be there for email address will be there for sure so that is called as a mail enabled security group so that is purpose of permissioning model so if you want to grant permission to a group of people then that group has to be a security group that is called as the permissioning model third is called as the dynamic distribution group so what is a dynamic distribution group go ahead i guess a query based uh, group uh, where we have like we find a query as per the uh, common attribute uh, which is defined on the user uh, properties so oh, the group members yeah the group members are added and modified depending upon the query say for example you want to create a group for all the bangalore employees so you can create a group with <coughs> excuse me the query saying city is equal to bangalore say if you want to create a union for mumbai city is equal to mumbai city equal to delhi city equal to new york like that you can create it so that what will happen is like the moment a new person joins the bangalore bangalore office that person will be automatically added to the group if a person is leaving that bangalore if the person is leaving the organization the person will be out of that group if a person is moving from the bangalore office to the mumbai office if the address is getting updated okay if the hr is updating that person's office address office uh, so, sorry the city saying like, like it is removing the, the hr is removing bangalore and adding mumbai immediately what happened that user will be removed from the bangalore distribution group and will be added on to the mumbai distribution group without any administrator intervention so that is called as a ldap query based group don't worry we will be creating it so that one is called as a m365 that's a m365 job of this m365 group is that a single group one group exists at correct that's right it's is going to exist at four places saying it will be existing at the azure ad it will be existing at the exchange online it will be existing on the sharepoint online and it will be available on to the teams online so when you create one group that one group will be available at four different places it is called as a m365 group which also we will create it don't worry just a theory part for your understanding yes So this is the same group where under we can create the channels between, right? The group will create a group under that group. You can create channels if you want. Right. Yes. Yes. That's right. Okay. So now let's talk about that. First one is the distribution. Is now as you could see on the look and feel of it, Microsoft is promoting to create M three six five group. microsoft is promoting because that's what they kept it at front after that they have kept all these things so distribution list by the name itself say like uh, simple say like uh, it admins uh, i just created a distribution list which is a very simple thing as i told you that that is meant only for the purpose of 
the email broadcast now let me go create a security group which is on the exchange side it is called as a mail enabled security group so i say that it admins so i want to show you the difference between the security group and the distribution group now if i want to grant permission i want to grant permission to full access hr admin it's not there why hr admin is not there because it is as in group that is the reason for it so that is the idea of something called as the distribution versus now because it admin is a security group that's why it's showing up over here hr admin is a distribution group that's why it's not showing up over here so i can grant it's a difference that you can notice when when you are performing the permissioning model so talking about the dynamic distribution list say that ke user the karnataka employees or else let's say it department it department owner we can add a owner for the dynamic distribution list but it's of no use okay so just because there is a owner that doesn't mean like the owner can change or modify the the members no only the member modification is possible through the query not through the not through not by the owner that is the idea over here so this is saying who is going to be the member specify the types of recipients that will be member of this group i say that we don't want anyone and everyone we want only the mailboxes we want only the mailboxes to be available so i'm going to click on this rule because i told you that it's a query it's a rule based group so i click on this i go check department if the department of this user is set to it then you add it this particular group so any one any person who is whose head whose detail is updated as it department will be automatically added over here so if the person is moving from the it to the hr to the finance accounts wherever that person is moving automatically that person will be removed from this particular distribution list and will be added to the other one wherever he or she is moving so this is purely based on the query thing that if you ask me can we see the members of this list answer is no on the gui you can't see it okay on the gui you can't see it but on powershell yes you can see it powershell yes you can see it but on the gui side no you cannot even see it that is the idea over here this is the concept so now have you heard of message moderation so the meaning of moderation is like a middleman is available for example see this if i go to this message approval if anyone wants to send an email to 
this group called as IT admins only after this person approves. Only after this person approves, the email will move forward. You all get the point. It's like a, it's like an approval. It's like a middleman approval. So that means if anyone is trying to send email on this group, so you just require the approval for this. Exactly. From your owner. Exactly. Now see this. Oh, what are we testing? We are testing this actually. <laughs> On behalf of, we tested it. Okay, so now I will test one more thing, saying like, it to IT admins. This is a mail tip. Do you all get the point? Do you all get an example of a mail tip? It says that messages sent to this to this group are moderated. Say that. Now I am on the moderator mailbox only. Let's see that. See this. What is it saying? Is that it is sent? Okay, because I am. Okay. because I sent it right. That person does not require a moderation. That's what I said it. Tested with a different account, which is not an administrator, which who is not a moderator, you might you might get an idea of what I'm saying. So let's see if I can open one more. This dot com. test three is opening is it test three only as this user only though it says that it is test three user three but still it is it is still this user only Hello? 
let's try after that uh, I'm, i'll leave it to you to try it because if i keep on trying all these things we will not be able to move forward Look for this password again is gone right now see here come up like this approval requested so let me it's going to be say like your decision is requested We all noticed it what I'm saying. Yes, like saying approval requested. So when there is a moderation, it is going to say like that. So the moderator approves this, the email will flow. Approve. So it is the terminology is called as a message moderation. So please remember that. We know about the features, but don't know the moderation. Sorry, what what? We know about it, but uh, don't know the <laughs> quality <laughs> message moderation. you know what but you never tested is that what you're saying Sheikh, i have tested but uh, no exactly now we don't know the browser technology like it's a message moderation and the one more thing uh Sheikh, i have a concern like uh, suppose I have created a normal distribution group. Suppose for uh, AD side, from the AD side, uh, if someone like convert their group scope and type, like from uh, group type is a security, you convert the like so it, this group is uh, like I have created XYZ group, okay, suppose as a normal distribution group. And uh, some other thing uh, from the like access management, uh, they convert this distribution group as a uh, mail level security from the AD level. Change the group type security, and the global scope is a glob uh, like uh, global instead of uh, like uh, local and uh, universal. But that time I was not able to see the exact group type in my exchange level. On premises, is it? Yes. Check on PowerShell, like what is the group category saying? Uh, no, no, like it just I have created a normal distribution group, okay. And uh, like uh, where that 10 or 20 members is uh, added for the broadcast. Okay, but after that, after that, sometimes like access management team convert this group into a security. They change the group type security and the group scope global. But we add the like at my exchange level in the ECP console, the group type is still distribution showing, but in the AD level, it is security. When I'm going to add some users to the ECP, it's giving me error. This is the security uh, group. So you're not able to add the uh, group in this.
so like i have tested like i have created the then i have created the a global enable security group through the ecp where i have just uh, uh, like uh, identify the difference ki if i create the mail enable security group through the exchange ecp console okay so there is the group scope type is a universal by default take it offline with some screenshots tarun i can't visualize like what you are saying but okay okay i i'll, I'll send you because like these things you know if i don't see it like i will not i just want to, to like just want to clarify like i have identified the difference where is the like why i am not able to get the exact group type when the ad team is going to convert the group distribution group into the security okay there uh, the scope is uh, global okay but the security type when i have just uh, create through the ecp console the scope group for the uh, mail enable security group is universal so universal group group type is sync like on ad and uh, ecp console but for the global it is not getting sync So I do one thing. I I'll send a screenshot and uh, with the like complete clarification. So I think that time uh, it will be helpful for you, and you will be able to get my answer. That's great at eighty, like eighty. But I'll see what I can answer on that. Yeah. All right. Third, these three type of groups right over here, and we are going to talk about something called as the M three six five group. So. that one group going to be created and that one group is going to replicate at multiple places so that is the idea over here i'm going to create it say like uh, Twenty-two. Create this group. What is going to happen is like this group is going to replicate, or this group is going to show up at multiple places. So one is that it is going to show up onto the Azure Active Directory as one of the group, which is not a surprise because like. when you create anything and when you create anything when you create any object that will be there on ad that is the basic idea so like that it is going to be available on ad which is a very normal one which is very common one and the second point is like it is going to be available on the exchange that is the second uh, location where it is available the third location where it is available is the sharepoint it is available it is going to be available on the sharepoint as a sharepoint site and it is going to be available on the fourth place which is the teams on the teams online it is going to be available as a group that is what it is going to do that four places it is going to be available in the logic so we just created a group but we did not add a member so let's go add the members for that group over here like places it will be replicating so as in when we talk about the sharepoint we will do it let's see if i can refresh it and show to you over here so here uh, like office 365 group is used as a like we are going to use uh, for the sharepoint not the mail enable security group it is going to be available at both the places at all the places it's going to be available it will be available as a site it will be available as a as a mail enabled a mail enabled group it is going to be available as a teams channel sorry teams group it is going to be available at multiple places that's the advantage of it
be available at multiple places. So basically, what is Microsoft is saying is like Microsoft has designed this M365 group for the purpose of collaboration, majorly for the purpose of collaboration. It's like immediately from the site you can send an email. You can you can share it to this group. So for the purpose of collaboration only, Microsoft has added this kind of group on the exchange online. That is what Microsoft says. So as in when we talk about the SharePoint, we will talk about saying like how these groups can be used that we created. All right. So these are the four types of groups that are available. As I told you, one group, one recipient simple one group is one recipient think in that way so you mentioned uh, like uh, in the second one for the mail enable security group for we also use the mail enable security group for permissioning like for the share file sharepoint and this group also like uh, m365 i say permissioning that's the example i showed to you when you say permissioning it's majorly the delegation yeah, for the share path, like uh, yeah, for uh, SharePoint. Their point is different. Share path is different. Okay. So, to think about SharePoint when it comes to mail enable security, it has nothing to do with it. So, this mail enable security is purely for the delegation, granting permission. That's the idea. Now. Let's talk about the resources. Those is that a non living thing which requires a mailbox of what is a resource mainly is a non living thing. Mailbox is a it's a living thing for a for a user. Okay, shared mailbox is also accessed by the user, but this is for the non-living thing like a room, which is a conference room. Which a room which is a conference room. Okay, so that is the idea. And let's see. So, what is the difference between a conference room mailbox and a user mailbox? between a conference room mailbox and a user mailbox the conference we use for to book the uh, like conference for meeting okay. so the question i'm trying to ask is like when you send an email to the conference room mailbox does anyone monitor it and send you a confirmation or what happens? Monitor it manually. The difference between a user mailbox is that you manage your own calendar. Conference room is like the automatic calendar management. Automatic calendar management is what is the idea of a conference room. Let's let's create it. I go create a room mailbox. Shin. I say that well, the floor. People can be seated on that room is the question. So the moment when you create a room mailbox is ready to accept the invitations that you could see it over here in an automatic way. No one is going to sit down and monitor this, this mailboxes unless until if it is designated. 
how many of your organization has got department secretary or admin secretary who will approve your meeting request you have to ask them to book the conference room you have to take approval they have to approve for booking the conference room how many of you have that how many of your organization has that literally no right yeah so that is what is common because when i worked in an organization they were having an admin secretary that person will only approve so now how can we designate now the current scenario is like it is going to automatically accept the bookings but i am saying that no i don't want to allow people to book it automatically i want to assign a person that person is going to approve it and then only the email has to go that is what i am saying so when you send an email to this room called as mercury it is going to go to this person after this person approves that meeting then only the confirmation will be provided that as the table management this is not see now see booking delegate now changed to this person it is no more automatically managed so booking options recurring meetings have you booked a recurring meeting in your organization you booked a recurring meeting we are participating meeting but <laughs> we are not doing. i'm not doing. okay so repeating meeting is, is, is the repeating meeting or recurring meeting is that what is the structure of our meeting is that every saturday and sunday at 6:30 pm ist is the design of our meeting right so are you going to allow that meeting to happen on this room or not is the question so if you want to allow it which is fine if you are allowing it what is the maximum booking lead time is the question how advanced the users can book it is the question what people generally do the book it they 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 book it for a longer period and they simply forget it okay so have you noticed that that the calendar says that the room is booked but when you walk to that conference room it is empty that's a very common scenario right so what people do is like they just book a recurring meeting every day at uh, at uh, at 2 to 4 pm they book it they occupy it or they don't occupy it doesn't matter they book it so that is the idea so say like if you want to if you don't want to allow recurring meetings don't want to allow recurring meetings you can cut it off over here and how advanced people can book it is mentioned over here maximum duration 24 hours and say like the contact information email address mail tip mail tip is saying like now before people send it they will have this they will get this information before sending it and as usual you have your mailbox delegation saying like the administrators they can see the they can have like delegation the idea so this is called as a room mailbox Let's talk about the equipment mailbox and let's talk about the difference of like the difference between a room and the equipment mailbox so the equipment name is that i say cap as i told you it's a non living thing cab is a non living thing so as you could see that when we created a room mailbox it was showing as the capacity phone number this that but here nothing so you are simple very simple so like in your organization 
if you if if people are quarreling for for a table tennis board or a snooker board or a badminton court simply you can create a equipment mailbox and leave it let them book it so first come first so let them book it and then they can use it that is the way how so that is purely for a non living thing otherwise concept is all the same it is also going to be automatically booked but if you want to have a person who is going to be watching it closely you can add a booking delegate over here clear everyone is getting everyone is getting a logic about the resources yes contacts so contact is that an outsider an external email address who wants to be part of your global address list is called as a contact already there is one thing available let me add a mail contact say like amit two people wants to be part of this particular organization where can we see them we can see it when you click on this two over here if you click on the contacts all contacts you will be able to see these two people right over here so these two people are not part of the common organization these two people are not part of the organization called as sdk techland they are external people but they still want to be part of your global address list that's when we add it as a contact see logic over here that is called as a mail contact there is one more thing called as a mail user what is a mail user a mail user is the one who has a ad account whereas this mail contact does not have a ad account so let me write down the first name say like what is a mail user is a person who has an external email address and also has a account in your active directory in what case in what scenario this kind of users you will be creating is that is that when you are having a contractors when you are having a contract employees those people will be having this kind of scenario over here so let's say like i provide an external email address so what generally that will happen is like you can add external email address like the way you have your you have your tenant id concept of a mail user which means the account i mean the user who has a ad account but an external email address is called as a mail user that is the idea
edit only this user id but if you edit only that user id it will be confusing for you to manage the account there could be a lot of repetitions so it is done this is an account which it has an ad account but it has an external email address that is the idea over here if the primary email address is going to be external but the secondary is going to be like this So last, one last topic, it should not take much time. Uh, uh, Dawood, hello. Dawood. Good. Uh, a mail user uh, have a mailbox or a mail contact has a mailbox. Dawood, is there any difference? Mail contact does not have a mailbox. Because mail... he does not have an account in AD. Mail contact is just an entry which is going to redirect to that particular one. The point. So if you have a Gmail ID, it is going to be from. It is going to be only from the. Uh, to say, if you have a Gmail ID, it is going to just redirect it to that Gmail ID. That's it. not from not it is not going to have a mailbox in there the point hello do you get the point no doubt sorry i did not get mail contact do not have a mailbox that is just a entry for your gmail on the gmail you have your mailbox yes but the mail user yes that mail user has a id account and that mail user has a mailbox okay got it though thank you so let's talk about the shared mailbox so as i told you shared mailbox by the name itself it is shared common list of people so what is it i do is like i'm going to create say like a mailbox called as it help desk at the rate this so who is going to have access is like the it admins are going to have access for that who who's going to access this mailbox is that the it admins are going to have access for it so alias will be automatically created so how to access a shared mailbox is like this you can click on this open another mailbox and then you say that
what is okay so looks to be some intermittent issue but the idea is like this is how you open another mailbox so what is the concept is like people will connect to their mailbox like this people will connect to their mailbox from this particular place and they will and they have full access to it so if i go over here who has access has access see this the send has permission the send on full access everything is available for the it admins that we just added that is the logic over here so that what will happen so people from the group called as it admins people from the group called as it admins will be able to will be able to <clears throat> you know access this mailbox and they will be able, they'll be able to send it from there that is totally possible that is the way how it works so this is what i was saying like you know people organizations they start the it help desk right from day one so if it is an organization which is running for 10 20 years 10 20 years means like they will they will be having it help desk for a very long time right so that is the logic so which means like the, the that the mailbox will be of of like larger in size so that is the logic over here okay so that's why it is very important that it will be it will be it will be like a 20 20 gb 30 gb of size so that is the problem over here so that's when that the size of those mailboxes will be like very high so that is that is what is going to eat up a lot of storage space for your for your organization so that is completely free when you when you move to office 365 that is totally free when you when you go to office 365 it's like it's like you don't have to you don't have to pay anything so, i mean you don't have to pay anything for this uh, shared mailbox that is the logic over here migration we will see it later so are you able to understand all these recipients over here and and what is it talking do you get the logic Yes, sir. So tomorrow, so tomorrow we will be talking about uh, the permissions and uh, compliance management. We will not see it. Compliance management we will talk about uh, when we when we discuss about the you know when we discuss about uh, the security and the compliance. So that is what we will be discussing, and uh, the book organization protection mail flow and so on and so on. so but the major part is like you should be able to you should be able to uh, you know understand the recipients in a much much clear way that is very important hello Daud. hello hello are you hear me here you go ahead. Uh, what is the mean CC and BCC? It is black carbon copy. So oh, when you black. when you send it, the recipient will not see this one. CC is like carbon copy that that the recipients will see it to whom you are sending it. But this BCC okay. to whom you are sending it, no one will know apart from you. All right. Thank you. Uh, hi Sheikh. Uh, in the in the outcome client, uh, if there is uh, any issue adding this shared mailboxes, is there any workaround or is there any folder permissions which needs to be added in the outcome client, not in the mailbox? The permission issue. You don't have to do anything on the Outlook. You have to do everything on to the Exchange server only. There's nothing to be done on the Outlook. So there is a feature. Have you have you all, have you all heard of a feature called as uh, auto mapping feature? 
have you heard something called as an auto mapping feature yes what is the concept of a auto mapping feature is that the moment you are granted the moment you are granted access to a mailbox it will be automatically coming up in your outlook let me see over here so let me ref on the left side automatically it is going to show up over here okay so that is called as an auto mapping feature because the it help desk is not uh, not refreshing it is not showing up over here so that is the idea so when you are having an issue in terms of permission there is nothing that you can do it on outlook all you have to do is like you will have to do it no you will have to do it uh, in on the server itself so uh, can 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 we force to powershell that auto mapping if it is not happening in the output client because i had an issue so it was so not there is a parameter called as hyphen auto mapping through which you can do it okay possible okay and uh, you know, if if an if an shared mailbox is too much of a size uh, and uh, if uh, the user can uh, the outlook client can uh, also face this uh, the outlook client client can also hang or uh, crash due to the same i guess because of the high mailbox size so that is that can be broken into uh, parts and then added uh, is is that doable yes, it is possible so when you are configuring the outlook when you are configuring the outlook what happens is like it will ask you like you want to configure it for 6 months mails or one year mails it ask you that way that way you will be able to configure it it's possible okay so when you are, have you seen that in outlook when you configure it it will say like how long mails you would like yeah. to Yeah, yeah. It 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 shows a bar where you can drag up to one year. Correct, one correct. Year. So that way you can decide saying like how long or what are the emails that you would like to see it. That way you can do it. So that can that get configured for the shared mailbox as well. Okay. Okay. So uh, one question I want to answer. So Venkat, the difference between a shared mailbox mailbox is storage distribution list is like only a mail contact that's it okay so this distribution list does not store anything think in that way distribution list does not store anything so remember that mailboxes yes they do store it but distribution list they don't store anything distribution list is just a is is just a you know is just a entry for broadcasting okay so i'll send you the notes and allow some time for the recording to be converted and i'll send that to you questions before we wind up then so i'll talk to you tomorrow evening at uh, 6:30 pm okay great okay. hey, uh, can you please go to uh, azure ad and can we see the groups that you have created today like distribution dynamic and other things like uh, distribution and uh, mail enabled security groups
so earlier what i'm saying if you uh, can we see here the group scope of this uh, hr admins so see that the type is a distribution and so in so tarun scope. understand in azure ad there is nothing called as a scope okay it's all like one entry your azure ad does not have ou it does not have scope okay It's only on the on, yeah, it's only on the on premises you have something called as a scope. Okay. Okay, thank you. So then, so I'll talk to you tomorrow evening at six thirty p.m. Then, so I will forward you this notes and the recordings to you shortly. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye.